Hi, everyone. Hey. Hey, Samir. Yeah, I hear you. I see you put some action items or agenda items for us to talk through. Yeah, we had proposed two topics in our today's agenda with E. Yeah, I think that sounds good. You want to wait a few minutes if Steve's joining or? Yeah, we can wait for Steve to join. Okay. And in the meantime, Pratish, I see you have an agenda item as well. Anybody else has any other agenda item? This is a technical discussion. Typically, we start with the technical and we do the projects on Thursday, but yeah, we can do the two project specific ones. Once I, think, we come. Um, I think probably a few PR, other PR reviews, comments to go through. Um, kind of want to reiterate what Samir said. We usually take up the roadmap and project management items on Thursday, but we can spend some time if if those items are shorter, because I, I know the Thursday time slot is not great for China time as well. Yeah, I propose to start with the technical one first, because with Shiva and you present, British present, let's get the technical things out of the way first. Yeah, either way, um, it's British here. Yeah, Pratish is here. And uh, how about if you guys are okay? Steve's not here yet. How about I become the meeting chair for today? And yeah, sure. Okay, uh, sure. Uh, I think, sorry, uh, I think Steve is on vacation this week, so we can uh, start. Okay, let's start then. I propose we start with the technical discussion first and we start with what British agenda item is, and then anybody else has a technical, and then we go back to the two project specific items from Yi. With that, British, yeah. you're ready? Yeah, so basically, uh, I added a specification for adding the, the uh, I did a specification for specific constraint, basically when a signature is written and it's, and it's verified what all properties uh, the set, signing certificate, certificate chain must satisfy. I have added the spec for that, so wanted someone from Microsoft to review it. It'd be good if we can ping Roy to review it. I tried ping Roy, but apparently, yeah, he didn't reply. So, hey, hi, Roy. Hi. Uh, so, like, I, I was going over this thing. I like we are. I, I have added a requirement for certificate, the certificate chain, and, and signing certificate and time stamping certificate. What are the constraints we want on that for Node 3? So, it would be good if we can review it all. So, British, your request is for Roy or or Shiva or anybody else uh, outside of the AWS joining on the call to review it. Yep. Okay. So it yeah, broke up at a minute, so I didn't see the hear the question. Yeah, yeah Roy, the, we request you to review the PR from British. Uh, yeah, I saw, saw it. So one sixty two, I take it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, British, I have just one quick thing. I noticed you're saying RSA 2048 keys uh, weren't at one time you were thinking of 3096 keys. Is that? Oh, or... wait. So uh, apparently we never modified that 2048. I think there was a discussion at one point to keep to go to RSA 3000. Uh, Maybe uh, I'm thinking. I think we have an issue open if we want to move from to uh, 2048 to some other size. Let me see. I think you open an issue for that. Let me check. Okay, that's fine. We can even do it as a separate PR, right? Let's review this yep. separate content. We can do that separately. Okay, so uh, you're not expecting a review on the call. You're just expecting uh, Roy to do an offline review and give you a and work. yeah that also works that works for me yeah there's not a lot here so I should be able to do it fairly quickly here okay so while Roy and maybe Shiva is looking at that if there's any other item Pratish you have on it or can we move on to the next topic uh, we can move to the next topic uh, 
Milan, you had some PR reviews in mind. You want to do that first, or Rakesh, you want to do the registry interact interactions update, or you request an update on the registry interaction? So I wanted to talk about the registry auth spec. That is this PR. Uh, maybe I'll share screen. There's some comments that I wanted to possibly close in this meeting. Give me a second. Feman, if you're taking attendance, can you add everybody on the call in the attendance? I think most of us forget. I notice you're adding your name. Can you add everybody's name? Uh, you mean attend attendees? Yeah. Yeah, I'm adding it. Uh, you know, I'm typing it. Okay, thanks. Don't worry. I like that. Yeah. Um, sorry, just a second. I am not sure. Let me try this again. Okay. Okay. Is my screen visible? Yes. Okay. Sure. I just wanted to go through. I saw that you responded on the uh, registry of. Also expected either Sajay or Steve to go through this PR. I haven't seen their comments yet. I think last Thursday or the one before that, Steve had some comments. I asked him to provide feedback on the PR. I haven't seen that. Steve's uh, in the middle of sailing a yacht at the moment, so I'm not too sure he's gonna be too responsive. Can we ping Sajay? And see if he wants to give any feedback. I'm fine going ahead. I want to make yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. So let's let me see if Sajay is around. Sajay is out as well till the 24th or 5th, I think. So, David, is okay. there anybody else can take over for this? For the code review with PR? Yeah. Uh, I basically want to make sure there's one more uh, kind of voice from Microsoft from the registry side chiming in on this. All right, I'll, I'll go through the comments. Uh, Shiva, I'm just going through comments which I wanted to discuss with you. The, I think the part that tripped me is why we say it is secure to transmit artifacts with their signatures over HTTP connections. Uh, you're saying because you can rely on the signatures to catch if there are any issues. I didn't, it, it wasn't clear why we have this sentence or why we don't just remove HTTP and just talk about that HTTPS is recommended. Yeah, I just say it's recommended to uh, transmit it to via HTTPS. Uh, so, uh, because we are transmitting the signatures, uh, signatures are uh, having the integrity and the, the authenticity for the signature itself. So it's it's the, it's secure to transfer it in any methods. So include HTTP. Okay, uh, you, you're yeah. basically saying we, we can send content over HTTP signatures, I understand, they're self-authenticating. And because these signatures are over oh. the artifacts, if yes. there are any issues, the, the signatures can be used to detect them. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. So that's why we have signatures, right? Right. And, uh, and, and, and for HTTPS, uh, it's mainly for the servers that make sure that we really store the, uh, uh, the manifest signatures on the server. And also uh, for HTTP, uh, that's for confidentiality. That even, uh, that's uh, attackers will not uh, know what we are transmitting. For example, okay. this is a secret manifest. We don't want others to know what the secret manifest is. That makes sense. I think uh, 
I'll I'll go back and make a recommendation. I think this statement just by itself, secure to transmit artifact and signature over HTTP, it it may not be clear for like a lay person why we call it secure. I I'll I'll make a recommendation there. I'll make a suggestion there on on a change to add that additional context. That sounds fine. Uh, what you said, MTLS sounds fine. Um, okay, that is get for registry access store for notation login. Okay. Yeah, this last one, the credential file, I was trying to see if we can get away from storing unsecured credentials. My, my only point was if Docker already provides some default credential helpers, I think they have ones for Windows and Mac. Yes, uh, uh, just a question. That one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so if install, if you install Docker, you will mm -hmm. find that uh, Docker will install like something like uh, Docker Credential Helper WinCrit on Windows. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah. Then it does not install anything on Linux. Uh, it was install uh, uh, OSX Keychain on uh, on Mac OS. And for yeah. the latest Mac OS, uh, uh, Docker will install Docker Desktop on the Mac OS. And if you don't turn on the Docker Desktop, you will not able to do any uh, operations on the uh, uh, Docker Credential Helper. It will just fail. Sorry, if you don't turn on what? Docker, you said Docker uh, something. Docker Desktop. Uh, Docker Desktop app. Oh, okay. Uh, that means uh, notation will have a hard dependency on Docker. Okay, my, okay, my, yeah. my uh, and also the, was... uh, another issue here is that what if a person does not want to install Docker and he want or she right. want to use the notation directly? Totally, I, I understand that, that case as well, I think. I think what I was leaning towards was, and I think that was the question here, which commands from the credential helper, you said get for access and store for notation login. So, so when we do notation login, we'll store it, store those creds in the provider, is it? Using the provider store command? Uh, yes, uh, uh, but uh, just let, letting you know that, uh, files are also providers. They call file provider. Okay. I guess I was, I was trying to see if we, because the notation, sorry, the Docker credential provider is, uh, I am assuming it's a pretty straightforward interface. At a minimum, it is some user provided script and then it's user's responsibility to store it in a local file yeah. or a secure location. Yeah. I, the, the if we can... Is, how do you use the notation CLI out of the box? Oh, we can. Right. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I, I, that, that is a good question. Either, either, you, either there isn't a credential provider and you have to provide CLI login credentials for every command. I'm just throwing out options. These are the options. We say we don't have inbuilt support for credential providers, which means you have to provide the username and login for every command. So that'll be like for every sign and verify, you have to, you have to provide that. Or you use the Docker credential provider and the simplest Docker credential provider can just be a script and we can give an example script, but we don't specify what the destination is. You figure out the destination. If you want to store it in a file, store it in a file. Uh, if you want to install Docker and use their secure credential providers, use that. That is one option that, that we can take. And th this is where I wanted more feedback. 
Um, I think we can do the same thing where that we did earlier. I'll, I'll just, I'll create an issue just for tracking the local credential file till we get more feedback. I think the, all of the other content is good and we can do implementation on the other content. The local credential stored with unsecured, uh, one more debate there. Does that sound fine? Uh, good for me, uh, how about others? David, Samir. Yeah, I'm thinking that uh, when you say among these two options, you're not taking a one-way door with your proposal, so I like it. But I have a follow-up question. Right? No, so no, we we no, it's not a, it's not the it's not that it's a one-way door. We are saying portion of the spec that will go forward and approve is the credential provider, which uses Docker credential provider protocol. But local credentials, unencrypted local credentials, and I mean, it has to be unencrypted. You can't, there's, there's a, some password at some level. Uh, we will keep that open. We'll track that in the issue and come up with an option. If we want to support it or not, what are the alternatives? Okay, so this is similar to the other open issue we have about encrypting the private key stored locally then. Kind of, uh, I think the issue here is, the, I think this becomes a bigger blocker to getting started experience if we don't, if we always rely on Docker credentials. So we, we, we probably have to resolve this before our CMO. Okay. All right, the last one, threat model. Um, so the threat model, we haven't started working on it. We have a bunch of specs, signature, uh, policy, uh, signing and verification process, plugin. Each of them have their own aspects for threat model. I was thinking each of them will have a section which details the threat model. Yeah, um, I think instead of a, uh, I mean, a, a, a a section for each part, we should have a centralized documentation say, hey, this is the threat model, it covers this, this, and that. We could do that. I don't mind doing that too, just that the owners for different specs are different people, and it would be good to, does that work for you? Like, uh, I don't mind having a single doc, but we can have sections owned by, like for example, directory spec that you worked on, it would be preferable for you to own the threat model associated with that. Whereas the plugin and the signature, I think I worked on portions of it, Pritesh worked on portions of it. So yeah, we, we are comfortable think, driving uh, the threat model. The, the, uh, I mean, the threat model, we should have some kind of, uh, some um, uh, consistency on the threat model. Um, and that's why I needed to be in a single uh, doc, just, just to be consistent. If we, we put it into different docs, then it's hard to make it uh, consistent. No, I, I agree in terms of having that central model is easy for anybody to review and kind of get the complete picture. Um, we'll go with that, the central doc. I will create sections in it and have different owners, I'll tag different owners to contribute. And it's not that it will just be disconnected sections. We'll have to, based on the signing or verification workflow, it touches upon different, all of these pieces. So that sounds good. I'll, I'll create a doc and I'll, I'll drive how we want to get inputs from each of these spec owners. Um, this sounds good. I don't think we have any major thing other than the credential, local credential file. All right. Um, there was one more that is the 
Give me just a second, pulling that up. Melin, yes, while you're yes. doing that, can we go back to 192? Yeah, sure. Or actually, the, the other one on there, what was it, 162? Uh, yeah, 162. Yeah, let me, let me open that as I'm projecting. All right. I had a couple of comments in here that I put in. Um, and they're really knit, so go just down down below. So okay. this here certificate chains must not contain a certificate that's not part of a certificate. Who's going to validate that? Like, is it is this a pipe dream on line 200, or we actually want to build the code to go off, make sure all the certificates are used? The places they did actually get. I think there's some level of this logic currently. Uh, this happens in two places. When we generate signature, because we treat sign all the signature generation logic as plugin, even the local key based is treated as a plugin. There's a verification after that, the minimal verification that will sanity check the signature. That does some checks. And then the verification logic will also do these checks. Okay, so you think we will actively keep code in to, to validate that all the certificates are used? I think the, yeah, yeah I think the specific point here is the, you, you are not having any certs that is not part of the chain. So the, so the, you're making sure the chain flows from a issuer to its issuer right till the root. And if you find any other cert in between, I think that's where it will flag. Yeah, because at some point we should, we might say should, and as long as we chain back to a root, who cares if there's extras? That's the question I'm having here. Is there a case that we need to support to, to have that? No, it's just extra work on the service side to go and validate that all the certificates are used. And why do we care if there's redundant ones? So because we are processing the certificate chain anyway for the EKUs. Uh, and that the cert chain is valid as in... Correct, but it could be valid and there could be extra certs in the bag, who cares? So one one thing is like we don't want to support your signed certificate as of now. It's yeah, yeah, it, has nothing, thing. it has nothing to do with self signed certificate. It's whether hey, there's a hundred certs in there. We only built a chain of twelve. Yeah. Who cares whether the rest are there? So then I need to perform all the then the code need to perform all the permutation combinations because so they can be in any order, right? So basically, out of hundred, I can have like compute ten chains out of it. So I have to perform like perform version for all the ten ten chains there. Like this is to simplify the what we're trying to achieve here right now, the simplest code possible. Well, like, the, for example, the simplest is to just say, hey, we built a chain out of the bag, and if as long as it chains, who cares? Right? The question here, we'll put in an extra thing and say, hey, 100 percent of the certs must be used. And I'm wondering what we gain by making that statement. I think uh, I think it reduces the complexity, right? If if so, so we are saying. A few things. There, there is a single chain, it, and there all are no, and there are no extra certificates. If all it does extra, is is reduce the storage. No, I don't. It, it makes the complexity that. of having to build the chain and keep track of how many certs were actually used higher. Yeah, uh, here's my bit. Uh, we do have a Golang library to verify that statement. So that basically we need to implement our own crypto library. We, we need to implement our own crypto library for basic constraints anyway, because Golang library, library doesn't account for basic constraints. So the Golang library doesn't account for uh, CA or path length anyway. So we have to do that work. I, I, I agree that it's a nice to have. The question is, I don't understand what the value is for, for making it a must. That's so all so I'm if saying. You don't, if you don't have this condition, that means, so first of all, we said, there's a single chain. There's also a statement in spec multiple places, also in here, that they are ordered. Okay, so the logic relies on starting yeah, with the, 
but it really doesn't have to be order because the certs point at their parent anyway. Right? It's, I'm just trying to figure out whether we're setting the bar higher than we actually need to. That's my question here. I think we already debated this in signature format, right? Whether the certificate chain needs to be in order or not. Whether it's in order or not, the, the real question is, why did we make the statement it must not contain? That's unclear to me what the security value is. I don't think it, I don't think oh, it provides no security, security value. Yeah, it doesn't provide security value. It's a, it's a implementation. It reduces the implementation complexity because you don't have to find what is the next in chain. The next in chain is always the next in the array. You still have to verify that it's the next cert. Okay, fine. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But once we get to the root, who cares, right? Once we get to the root, you could have certificates after the root, which you could ignore. Right, but that doesn't say that. It says here, we walk back up to a root we trust, and if there's other additional certs in the chain, we're gonna fail. So if again, I, I- Again, I want to see a scenario that, where this would cause problems. It, it's it's it would, to it would, relax. It would, cause, it would cause problems in the following. Hey, I, I configure a trust that my root is midway through the chain. And somebody else says my root is further up the chain, in which case on some of the systems, this is going to fail. So, so when you say my root is midway in the chain, is it is it still a root certificate or it's an intermediate certificate? Do we require it to be a root certificate? It could be a in a, in the trust store. In the trust store, we don't require it to be a correct. Which but in the but in the signature envelope, we require it to be a full chain, including the root certificate, to support revocation checks till the root. Yeah, but that's the same thing as going to the inter. Uh, if you trust the intermediate, why do you? That's Milan. That's why I'm trying to, to to tease that is whether we're going to make this super hard for trust point of view. You're you're saying, hey, you can only ever configure the root, the actual physical CA root in your trust store. Right? No, 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 no. We are not. No, we are not. Uh, in the in the trust policy spec, we don't explicitly say. We say it is recommended to be root but it will not fail if it's an intermediate. Yes, but line, and, 200, but line 200 means anybody that's hands as a signature will fail because they'll have additional certificates past what we think is the, where the trust is validated from, right? So the matching is not, not done that way. The, you, are, you are evaluating the third chain associated with the signature for, I could say, your self-validating self-integrity checking that certificate chain matches our spec before you do third chain validation against the trust store. This yeah, is basically should... saying, given a signature envelope, independent of the trust store, the trust store is not in picture at this point. It is, it is ordered, it is complete, and there are no additional certificates. Correct, but the problem here is you don't do any curl checking past what you think is the trusted route in the trust store, correct? No, 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 we are not. We, we are walking the entire, so, so the, 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 the reason we require the full trust, full certificate chain till the route, irrespective of what you intended to anchor on in your trust store is because you may use one intermediate to anchor on in your trust store. Uh -huh. Somebody else may use a higher Correct. one or somebody else may use a root. So from the signature producer's perspective, we say you always provide us the full chain, including the root. The verifier can anchor on any intermediate in, in that chain, in the trust store if they wanted to. <coughs> now, now this validation is done independent of the trust store before we do search and validation against the trust store. You're saying I got a signature envelope. The signature envelope, as I'm validating it independently, the certificate chain has to be a complete certificate chain ordered 
And the, in that context, it is saying should not contain additional certificates. That has nothing to do with the trust store at this point. It, it's still it's still weird. Because <laughs> because once you get to trust degree, you're not going to check his issuer to see it's been revoked. So you have no way to validate it. So why would you even bother going past what you think the, the trust sorry, 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 come again. Could you repeat that, Roy? I said, well, let me turn the video off because in case there's bandwidth problems. If there's a trusted route and it's a mid midway through the chain, in theory, you shouldn't go and look at its parent and say, has it been revoked? Because the person telling you, this is his trusted route. I think we we had discussions. We can debate that. We had discussions internally on this, and right, right. it was a better security position to do the revocation check against the whole chain. We haven't we haven't finalized our revocation feature and details of that. So two hundred um, locks us into having to keep track of all the certificates that are used. And this are, there's a this, uh, this is the in the in the signature envelope even before like th this is talking about specifics of how we validate the certificate chain uh, let me pull up the signature spec give me just a second well and i'm just saying that this is tying the server to do a potentially more expensive operation that that doesn't give them a lot of value that's all i'm at saying here from a security point of view i think i'm I think I'm looking at it the opposite way. This simplifies the implementation logic because there are assumptions here that this will be in a specific order and then how each certificate is related to next one in the array. It is saying they're related by N and N plus one are related as child and parent. You can't have a, a, a different certificate in between. So uh, uh, how about I just like, well, then finish your thought, but let's part of this discussion. Uh, if we can take it offline. Yeah, let's let's move on. I, I'm just I'm asking a question here whether we signed up for doing more expensive operations that have no real value to the customer. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I hear you, Roy. I wasn't. So let's just move to do the next comment. The next comment was the next one. The certificate chain oh, this one. valid at signing time. This notary must not enforce validity period nesting for certificates. That's kind of weird, isn't it? Is the leaf yeah. node certificate is time valid, but its parent is not? Yeah, that's the cat here. Actually, the specification, uh, I think RFC, allow, in RFC, I'm, I forgot the number, they allow you to have child beyond, beyond the parent's validity. X509 RFC. Okay. But, and we and we, we want to allow that. It's just that we want to make sure when, the, when it was signed, the complete chain was valid. We don't care how your certificates are organized. Like you can have your child be, go beyond your parent, but at the time, all should be valid. Maybe we need to clarify here with an example. I think the- Hey, yeah, I'm just saying the- I'm saying the wording is weirdly worded. That's all. Somebody can think of a better word, wording here that makes- it a little clearer that it would help. Uh, I'm open for suggestions. I like. I was like, is this is the second statement confusing on two eighty four? It's line two. It's two o four that was confusing for me. Okay. The no notary must not enforce the validity period nesting for certificates. I think that the terminology itself, what validity period nesting means. Uh, may not yeah. be clear. And what is the implication of that? I can put some reference there. So those were the uh, two comments. That's for the Go on like to the Yeah, for the reference, I just got this from this doc. Like that's the word terminally where I picked it from. So right. I'm not sure how common is that. Um, very old RFC. Mm -hmm. oh, it's not an RFC, it's basically an implementation guideline someone wrote from the okay. end. Okay. 
Roy, going back to the certificate chain. Yeah. So this is the certificate. This is the signature spec, uh, the current version. And uh, Pritesh's PR is, is basically amending this whole section of it. So, so in here, under unsigned attributes, so here we say, right, so what, are, what is the certificate chain? So our, here's our definition. So it says ordered starting with signing certificate intermediate and ends with the root certificate. Yeah, but the part that's confusing there, Melinda, is that if my trust is partway through the end, that in theory, I don't, the chain is complete, but the extra ones don't matter to me. And the way it's written, I think my, tells me that's gonna fail. I, no, no, what? I think the definition of extra ones is what we are probably looking at differently. Yeah. Uh, du during signature generation, so this is talking, this whole spec talks about what a valid signature envelope looks like. Yeah, but during, in that case, they have no idea who who's gonna trust what intermediate certificate. So they yeah, have that to is send right. the, whole, the whole thing. They have to send the whole thing. And in the context of, Ritesh is, so in here, so when it's saying that is not part of the certificate chain, if, if, you, if, if you still had the whole certificate chain till the root, right? And your anchor was, uh, mid, it was midway between it. The certificates after that midpoint are not considered outside of the certificate chain. They, are, they were still part of the full certificate chain. What we are saying is having certificates that are totally unrelated to this certificate chain in that in that uh, certificate chain attribute in the signature. And one reason not to do that is because let's say in future we want to support cross signing or multiple routes in that we cannot do it without breaking customers, existing customers. If we start allowing extra certificates in the chain. Because what will happen is Customers will have extra certificates here. They can might have multiple chains there, which they can form. And if we in future, if we want to add the feature of like cross signing certificates or multiple chains there, they will be surprised that now now they are just now there's their artifacts are referring to multiple routes. Yeah, well, we wanted to, to say that's out of scope for the time being. The real question here is that we that people look at this and then don't realize what the trusted route certificate they picked is in relationship to the statement. So it is, yeah, so it is not related to that. And I think I think also need to clarify by when you say not part of, I think might be better to say unrelated to the certificate chain. That, that is the main intent here to, to say, you can't have a totally unrelated certificate in that, in that chain. Yes, that might help too. That, that's the other way to phrase this. Because- All right. You can see where I'm confused and where end users are going to get confused. Yep, yep. I, I mean, also that we are reading only this particular section without having an idea of like what other pieces it relates to. All right. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to remove my, hey, waiting for comments to say approve, assuming you're going to fix it so you, I can unblock you. Yeah. Uh, so any suggestion? Any suggestions for last comment? How should I reword or rephrase that? The last sentence. Do do not force. I'm having a hard time doing that. I think I'll I'll work with you. I think it probably needs a few more sentences just to okay. say what is validity period nesting. Okay. Okay. So yeah, okay, I can do that then. Yeah, I can explain what does next validity period nesting mean. Okay, and I wanted to discuss the TSA one, which is this. Um, the CLI support for TSA, so. So Pratisha, the, I've, I've approved the port. Thanks. Um, this might be related to one of the items that Fenman wanted to cover. Um, so we have implementation of TSA signing in alpha one, that is correct. Uh, but there are still open items related to it. So 
I've, I've just listed these. I'll, I'll go through them. The, the idea or kind of the line we drew was for RC1, we want TSA signatures to be generated, but not to be verified. And we can, we can debate that if we want to change that position. So this is still required for RC1. Uh, if somebody says sign, do we pick a default TSA or we always require them to specify uh, like a minus TS, which TSA server to use? Uh, uh, is TSA a must uh, for signing? TSA is a must for, so basically if you don't sign with the TSA, yeah. And you verify the signature after the signing key has expired, it will fail the signature validation in the, when we do signature level, verification level is strict. Okay. So, so TSA is a must. Yeah, for, yeah, basically we are, we are using that for trusted, trusted time stamping. Um, no, hang I on. wouldn't say it's a must, I would say it's recommended. If, if you're using strict signature validation level, so here, if you're using this, you need a trusted timestamp. No, if it's not there, it should be fine, right? What do, what do you mean? Timestamp time signature is always optional. If my, I, I just want to restrict it to the one month period and I'm, I'm having certificate of one year. I want to do it that way. I don't want to timestamp. Timestamp is always optional. It's a counter signature. Um, sorry, can you repeat that? So for example, I don't want to timestamp. If you, yeah, if you don't want to timestamp and you are, you are okay with artifact not validating after the signing certificate expires, that is that is fine, but I think for most cases, users will not but, understand that difference till things start failing. Yeah, so we can say it's recommended, but they can opt out of it if they want to. Yeah, they. I mean, the, this is a debate of how the switch should be supported in the signing uh, CLI. Uh, so, so that's easy. That's it. by default we don't support. I mean, by default we don't use TSA unless you are specified. Okay. Uh, otherwise, we'll have a problem that is uh, which default uh, TSA server we are using. We don't have a public default server. Uh, it must be because TSA is a service mm -hmm. and not as a tool. We cannot just have a hard dependency on some service, right? Yep. I understand and, uh, that. I, I, and, uh, I so it's not a must. It, it's, it's a may or recommended. So, uh, uh, so first users need to know what they are doing right and also strict is very strict and uh, I, I don't think most people will just use a strict uh, verification level right i mean it, it yeah it, it totally depends on the on how you have you how customers want to do it. it it's it's possible that most customers just go with permissive but if if you if you want to say this is this is what, at least, I think at least strict comes into picture where you are you are distributing artifacts. Or I take that back. This the setting this level is from the verifier side. From from a signing party's perspective, if you are going if you are signing for long term with short term keys or even keys with a year validity, you want to do time stamping. Otherwise. The verification just starts failing at some point. And you can't assume that all of your customers, if you're doing, if you're signing for public distribution, you can't make any assumptions on which verification level your customers set, whether they are at permissive or strict. So I think it is fine keeping, the, I, I guess that ends up being the same model as like sign tool for Windows, uh, Windows signing, Windows artifact, MSI, et cetera. Uh, time stamping is enabled through a switch there. Uh, Rakesh Pradesh, can you correct me if I'm wrong? I think the TSA on sign tool is a uh, opt-in and that means- That's correct. Yeah. Okay, we can, we can keep it that way. 
Um, getting back to this, what that also means is, or like, what are the gaps here? So default TSA, we said we don't want to do the default TSA with the, I think we'll have to clarify the risk associated with that in documentation. Uh, the other reason I didn't want TSA verification support in, R in, in RC1 is it would be nice to have the trust store be pre-populated with the public TSAs. And we don't have any uh, default trust store work scope for RC1 that will be beyond RC1, how we want to do either public CAs or public TSA certificates, distribute them as named trust stores. Third thing, I think third thing is debatable. We, we have a version of CMS verification, uh, PKCS7 TSA verification in the code. Yes. I think we need some more eyes over that. With the initial version, we like we have a bunch of, I don't know, like uh, we use the ASN1 encoding from Golang, but we have all the layers wow. above it, the CMS specification coded by us, uh, coded by us as encoded by Shiva. <laughs> I'm, I'm reluctant on like how much ownership we want to take on the CMS verification logic there. Um, those were the open points on why we should include this in RC1 or beyond RC1. Uh, okay, so uh, let me clarify on the CMS, custom CMS verification code. Uh, so first of all, uh, CMS is encoded in ASN.1 uh, BER encoding. It's not in DER. Because it's in BER, uh, we cannot use the Golang built-in uh, ASN1 uh, package to decode it or encode it. So that's why we have an extra layer to convert all the BER encoding into DER so that it can be considered by the Golang building library. Uh, that's the first. Uh, second thing is uh, we don't have a uh, mature CMS uh, library uh, in the market. Right. Uh, for both. So that's why we have this customer, uh, I mean, customized CMS verification code. Can, can you repeat the, the bar versus DAR encoding the BR versus DR? Is that because the TSA signatures are always DAR encoded? Um, uh, it, it's, uh, okay. TSA signatures are in the form of CMS and the CMS is in BR form. Okay, and the ASN1 encoding library in Golang, that doesn't support BR. Yes, it does that not support so BR. It's only so support that... DR. Okay. Uh, okay, that that gives some context. I I thought TSA was. Give me a second. Um, I think while well, Melinda's finding that she was my response would be that then it becomes like a one way door. Any signatures generated now without a TSA will have to be re signed if the customer wants to do TSA checking in the future. So that was the advantage of including TSA signing in on day one. But that's not a big gap, I guess. We can customers can always resign if they want to do TSA verification. Okay. So again, I'll let the debate continue on whether we need to include this in RC one or not. I was pull, I was looking up some data. Uh, and also, uh, I paste a link in the chat window so you can learn what is uh, ASN.1, BER, and DER, and what's the differences. Yeah, I mean, I have an idea of like the bar being the expanded encoded rules with multiple interpretations, and the DER is the subset, which is much more straightforward. Uh, and that's why we need a cozy. 
uh, causing the successor of the ASN.1 and then the message pack. I think. Uh, uh, I mean, see, not causing, sorry. Trying to get a link for this. I I thought the TSA server timestamp token is always in dar format. Let me let, I'm trying to get a link. We can debate this as we can follow up on this separately. It's from the RFC. I'm trying to get a good link for this. Is that not the case? RFC 3161. Um, we can continue on the next topic. Yeah, I think let's move on. Uh, but we, sorry, we, are, are we okay with uh, punting this post RC, RC1? Or we are saying we, we have enough to support the verification. At least one blocker still is not having the public, uh, uh, not having the trust store figured out for public TSAs? I think the bigger concern for me, this is like a one-way door. If you add it later, people will have to resign. That's the debate is in my head. And I'm trying to see is resigning such a big challenge if you don't support signing an RC1. Bigger question, mm -hmm. how, how do you default a TSA to use? I don't think we want to label anyone as the, the approved TSA server. Yeah, the, no, the, I mean the, that 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 is a that is a valid question. You don't want to send all the all the requests to one particular TSA, and TSAs don't have full hundred percent uptime. They have outages, etc. Uh, you can force people to use TSA by making the minus TS required. That is one option, or you can keep it optional. So there there are different ways of achieving the same thing. Uh, I posted the link, the RFC link, where it has the, at least it says for the HTTP timestamp protocol over HTTP is a DAR encoded timestamp response. Uh, yes, but if you look at into the uh, response, you'll see, okay, uh, uh, the response is yeah, encoded, but the content is, is B, B yeah, encoded and uh, Okay, so okay, uh, okay. Um, I, I can think of, think of uh, offline with you. No, that, no okay, all... that sounds good. I mean, you're saying that we have to deal with the uh, at some level anyway. All right. Okay. Uh, I think that we are fine on that thread. Uh, I'm still talking about like, the, are, we, are we okay pushing this beyond RC1 or do we want to include TSA verification in RC1? I'm fine with it saying TSA verification is in, but I don't think you can say it's by default. You can. Shiwei, what do you think? Uh, yes, uh, so I, I agree with you that is, Yes, we need TSA uh, in the RC1, but there's no default TSA. So if the user wants to enable TSA, they need, then they need to op uh, provide an option uh, in the CLI command. And, uh, uh, and also there obviously there's no, uh, I mean, uh, there's no default uh, certificate in the trust store. Uh, if the user want to use TSA, then they need to provide some certificate in the trust store. And there's no change to the uh, custom CMS verification code uh, because we don't have a, a mature CMS library uh, from out of the box. Yeah. So is there, so is there any, we, in the RC1 timeline, we haven't, accounted for additional work for this. Is there additional work associated with this? Uh, no, it, it, it's, it's already there because. 
And the TNT support is already there since the alpha one. So there, there shouldn't be any delta between that and uh, as in you have the TSA switch and the verification code is in there. So the assumption is if customers want to use TSA, they they have to configure the cluster by themselves, which they do for the signing part. Um, all right, I'll I'll make a pass over the implementation and see if I have any other concerns with that. But that that sounds good. All right, I think I covered the topics that I wanted to go over, Rakesh. Yeah, I wanted to uh, bring up the int register interactions uh, work uh, because currently I'm working on the end-to-end -end, uh, verification workflow and I'm at a point where uh, I need to write code um, that uses registry interactions like um, fetching the signature manifest and then the signature envelope blob, um, those things. I wanted to check with uh, Shiv and his team uh, where we are on the registry interactions because Shiva's team owns the registry related work rate. Um, I wanted to check with you where we are on that and when can we expect the interface of the registry code. Shiva, are you there? Uh, yes, can you repeat the question? So you, you are talking about the, the API of the rich code. Uh, it's already uh, for the ORAS V2 API, ORAS code here. So I, I also think that part is owned by us, right? Yeah, the registry code is owned by you. Yeah, and also how we uh, deal with the registry is also owned by us. So. Uh, Okay, so Ian Feynman, uh, can we just go through the uh, Google spreadsheet for the details, the, 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 the detailed items? Uh, I think we have some back, we have some gaps. Yeah, Feynman, yeah. you want to bring it up? I wanna... um, let me share my desktop. Okay. Can you see it? Yes. So, Shui, which part would you like to jump to directly or start from the beginning? Uh, so, uh, so for the re for the registry related stuff, uh, the first one is the registry authentication. Uh, we are pending for the uh, uh, the spec to be merged. Once the spec is merged, we can start on the registry authentication coding, and uh, that's owned by our uh, by my team. And also, uh, uh, there, there, uh, there's parallel work uh, related to the uh, registry um, that is signature uh, pushing and pull. And uh, and also it's it's uh, it's there in the work items list. Uh, yes, that that's the uh, uh, pull signature and the uh, signature retrieval, and uh, uh, it, it's there. So so uh, Rakesh, what's the question again? Uh, the question is, um, I'm currently working on the verification workflow right uh, where i will be needing the signature envelope and then signature um, manifest and then run the, run that through the verification code uh, so i will be using the registry code that your team is going to build um, and then pull those artifacts um, and the question is when can we have that registry interface um, so that I can make use of that interface and pull the objects. I don't need the entire thing working. If I can just have the interface, then I can get my work going. So, okay. 
uh, uh, we can provide it later. And uh, 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 what information do you need? Uh, first is you want to manifest, right? Giving a tag, you need a manifest. And also you, you will need something like, uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, do you need extra information of, of a manifest? Uh, extra information of a manifest. Um, I did not get that question. I think she would. The the are uh, like sorry. Let let me let let's take a step back. I think the overall workflow for let's talk about the verification one is like given verify some URL artifact URL. Yeah, there's a registry call for the references API and yes. getting individual signature manifests. And then uh, for the signature manifest, I think we are punting the uh, X509 filtering, whatever. Uh, but then you have to get the signature blob. I think the, the gap is the registry interaction using ORAS client is implemented in notation CLI. Whereas yeah. the verification logic is being written in notation Go. So the, so the registry interaction using ORAS client, that logic needs to move into notation Go. Yes. I think the registry auth portion of it, the Docker credential and the local credential that that we discussed last time that can stay in notation cli one portion of it yeah. but when you okay. get to the notation go layer you are going to use the oras client give it an auth token and should be able to make the references api call and the pull push wherever required push oh, i see it. Uh, so the main gap here is the item 17 right 17 yeah Yep, I yeah. think so. Rakesh, yeah. okay. can so, confirm? Uh, I think that, that uh, is the gap. Yes, uh, that item will start today. Um, so uh, now we have a team working on the uh, notation and auras, uh, a full team. Okay, awesome. Good to hear that. <laughs> so you, so you, you'll have okay. So this is planned for this week. Yes. Okay. Uh, um, when can we expect the PR? Any tentative dates by the end of this week? Yeah, yeah, should should be okay. Um, I see. So I'll be blogged on this uh, for this week. Is it possible to get this sooner, like next uh, couple of days? I think what Rakesh is, you you need an interface, right, Rakesh? I think what Rakesh is looking for at a minimum is he's writing pieces of the verification logic, uh, individual pieces like load the trust policy, load the trust store, uh, integrity, search and validation. Uh, I think the minimum that he needs is a class, a placeholder class or an interface with methods that, that will do the registry operations. And maybe behind that, we can define it however. I, I remember uh, Sajay a long time back said, we don't have to have the concrete, like you could rely on the local file system based references if you wanted to. We can build that in at this point if we wanted to, but that's the minimum that we want. Some contract, some interface placeholder that the rest of the verification logic can be coded against. But if it is faster to do the refactoring and move it, it's, it's gonna be same effort, I'm, I'm fine. I'll, I'll let you make that call, Shiva. But that, that is the minimum that is required to unblock Rakesh. So is there anything else that I need to be in for? I have to go cook some supper here. <laughs> no, I think I think we're good, right? At, at least from my standpoint. Uh, no. yeah, yeah, I also need a job. So I have a more, one more, just one more important thing is about the code review. So as, we, as all you know, and all, all we know that is, uh, we are planning on all the PR reviews. So uh, the rigid authentication and the refraction notation to notation go and all the coding 
effort, we have done a lot of PRs. And the PRs are depend on PRs. How do we deal with PR reviewing? So I have been trying to unblock that as much as possible. So right, so right now, and I'll so, try so to make it. Malin, can I ask a question? Where are they blocked on the Microsoft side or the Docker um, AWS side? For, for which part? For any of the pull requests, where we have a log jam, is it because of one side versus the other? Short resources or is it just in general? Uh, it's, it's in general. I think previously we didn't have more involvement from Shiva's team, so we were short on reviewers. We had Kim available, and after he went, there was a gap. Then we changed the review process. Uh, also, we didn't want to rely on Steve or Niaz to approve or wait for them to give approval. So we changed it to two code reviews from yeah. either of the organizations and then one final approval from me or Shiva. So essentially me or Shiva have maintainer, kind of maintainer rights for the implementation, for any of yeah. the notation. And what I'm doing is, for example, there were a couple of uh, mm -hmm. verification PRs that Rakesh submitted, Pritesh reviewed it, and I reviewed it. So it got two reviews, two reviews as in two proper code reviews, not just saying uh, I approve this. So it got two code reviews, and I pinged Shiva on that saying this got two reviews and merging it. So I think that that is a pretty lightweight in between process that we can use to. Uh, to expedite, but on the on the same token, I think what what we want to do is we want to make sure that valid feedback is heard, and you, we don't run ahead and merge prematurely. So, for example, if there's a PR where say Pritesh raises a PR and Rakesh puts in some comments, get addressed, I review it, uh, Shiva reviews it. If there's a review feedback from Shiva still that is unaddressed and not closed, I wouldn't go ahead and say, uh, I approve it as a maintainer. I would wait for Shiva's comments to be addressed. That makes perfect sense, 100%. All right, Shiva, does that answer? Uh, yes, uh, and for uh, for the item 17, that we will start with a small PR and the following with a bunch of small PRs. Uh, so I will ping you uh, once we have a PR. Okay, and then, <laughs> then Sylvia's PRs, the first set I approved, the second set I have to go through. And yeah, yeah from my side, I've been trying to unblock PRs. Okay. Okay, sure. Um, Okay, so basically, uh, just let, let me summarize that mm -hmm. yes, we still, uh, for any PR, we need to uh, to be approved by uh, by you and me, right? <laughs> yeah, by by you or me, e oh. either of us. Yeah, and, and, if there's and a also and also uh, 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 we need uh, approvals from two different organizations. No, we we relax yeah. that. We relax yeah. that. The only difference there, she weighs, is if there's open comments unaddressed by the other company, that company has to resolve it themselves. We can't override their comments, which is perfectly fair. Well, uh, so can we document some uh, uh, somewhere? <laughs> or, I'll try to. I'll, I'll, that's, that's a good ask. I'll, I'll get it done by Thursday. OK, I got to go. OK. Um, I think we're done with all the technical items. We can, I don't mind staying over another 10, 15 minutes for Finman's items. Yep, same here, uh, Finman. Yeah, but I need to job. Uh, so uh, Finman, I need to job. And uh, yeah. I, I, I need to attend another meeting. Sure. So uh, Samir and Lee, I think we still have two topics that, yep. yeah. Do you think we have still have time to yes. yeah. discuss let's, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's work through it. Let's answer your queries. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So uh, so we can keep this thread in this meeting. Yeah. Uh, actually, we sorted out uh, this this spreadsheet yesterday uh, with E and uh, Shui, and uh, for the next step, we want to. Uh, prioritize 
and uh, figure out the timeline for you know the RC version. Yep. So we want to confirm it in this meeting. Yeah, we also highlight some uh, items that have been that have been uh, completed and some items that was a that were a block issue. Yeah, you might find some different color with highlighted. Yep, I'm with you so far. Yeah, go ahead. Um, actually, we we focus. Yeah, actually, we focus on the items that have been assigned to show at the beginning of this spreadsheet. Uh, I think for the first one, uh, this has been completed last week, and so so we marked it as uh, the green, the green row. Okay. Yeah, I think this one is still under active reviewing. For the next one. Yeah, uh, actually for the specification for signing with local key, uh, Roy has helped us to investigate a potential solution, but unfortunately we are paying, we are paying on these things. We don't find a, a uh, potential solution to deal with this this uh, request. Yeah. Jesse Roy is not here, right. so we yeah. it has a blocking issue. So we need more time to investigate, but it might not be included in the RC version one. Does that uh, make sense? Yeah, I think we have we are having some discussions as well. If we don't solve this with the crypto library, then we should just remove that option completely. So don't give customers or don't give users a way to use local keys without them being protected. So if we decide to not do anything here, mm -hmm. then we should, or I'm suggesting, I don't know how this feel about it. I'm suggesting we should remove the signing with local key completely from RC1. So how about you think about that proposal and we can talk about it next week. Yeah, I think we can uh, add this for add this issue to the. Let me see this issue. I think we can also discuss with David and uh, in this Thursday, this Thursday. Yep. Yep. Let's go back. Feynman, I think it will help if you turn off your video because your voice breaks up when you're uh, talking and uh, changing things on the screen. Yeah, Feynman, maybe you uh, need to stop has uh, been the, the same for me as well. Oh, sorry. Okay, you need to try the um, so I didn't follow it up. Stop and, uh, video. Okay, so I will try to reshare it. Yeah, and stop the video. Okay, yeah. I think it, it caused by my networking issue. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, not yet. Uh, now it uh, comes up. How about now? Yes. Yep. You can see it. Yeah. Um. Actually. Uh. We're... So uh, let's see the registration registry authentication. I think we have discussed this issue this morning and uh, it is still uh, under Shui's work and the Shui, and the Shui has uh, did a lot of work after uh, maybe Rakish or British someone else uh, comments yeah, we have yeah a... I think we are, we are pretty close to closing I think by Thursday we'll be able to close mm -hmm. the registry on yeah, yeah you should still... probably market yeah. as work in progress on that one just change the date to work in progress Right, 
Go ahead with yeah. your name. I see. You, do you want to give any uh, comments? Uh, I mean, maybe we can first agree uh, the work items for RC1. And uh, then we can uh, work through details. If we have time today, if not, we can do it offline to mark the progress. Yeah, I think he and uh, me wants to figure out uh, what items should be included in the RC1 and uh, we can uh, prioritize it in this meeting. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, basically, my understanding is, uh, uh, Fimi, can you scroll down? Uh, I see, uh, yeah, uh, stop. Can you scroll up? Here, uh, the line. 49. So basically, uh, here are the other uh, work items we needed to implement uh, for RC1 release, right? From the top till this uh, 49. Maybe also including the uh, several items till uh, line 54. All these other work items we, we needed to do for RC1, right? And also, uh, we just discussed there are some items marked as uh, red. So for those items, uh, they may be uh, moved out of uh, RC1 scope, but that we needed to handshake with uh, David, Steve later. Good point, uh, good point. Uh, Ye, uh, can you scroll down a little bit from line 54 down? Let's, let me address all your comments one by one. Yeah. Okay, so you're right, line number 54 is where all of RC1 should come in, except for line 53. I think as we discussed, COSI signature format review can happen post RC1. So you can probably remove this line and put it beyond post RC1. You, so you can cut and paste this line beyond RC1. So you can- Add it here? Yeah, like beyond, yeah, yeah. Yeah, post RC1, you can add it wherever you want. P put it after line number 61, if you're looking for a place. Okay. I think when you copy, you wanna copy the entire line, right? It's just easier if yeah. you just copy it. Sure. Yeah, you can select uh, line 53, yes. And then you can strike out that line or remove that remove line. Obviously it's line. Okay. Hey, Pritish Rakesh, if you want to drop, you can drop. I can uh, work on this next one with uh, your choice entirely. Well, I will drop. Thanks. Sure. Thank you, Pritish. Rakesh. Yeah, I think uh, the all of the other things I think belong in RC1, especially line number 53. Uh, because if you think about it, if you can't inspect a signature, then users have no way of learning about the signature on an artifact. So, so yeah, up to line 53 is required to answer your question. Mm -hmm. can, you, can you scroll up uh, again, Feynman? There are mm -hmm. some items marked uh, in red. Yeah. In this part? Uh, can you scroll up again? Keep, keep scroll up. I remember some items. Uh, mentioned not in RC1 scope. Uh, yes, uh, this one, line 12, we needed to handshake with David later, Steve. Uh, I remember there's other item. I agree with, first of all, let's, let's finish line number 12 discussion. Uh, I agree with line number 12, that if we cannot encrypt the private key, then we should, remove line number 12 from RC1 completely. I agree with that proposition. Mm. Let's see what David has to think about it. Now, are you moving to line number 14 now? You wanna discuss about line number 14? Yeah, for number uh, nine, uh, 12, uh, we, we, we will discuss with uh, David to confirm it. Okay. And we propose to move it out of RC1 scope. Uh, oh, hang on, hang, then... on hang, hang on. Let's be very clear what we are moving out of RC1. If 
we do not encrypt it, then I'm saying we will not even have a way to sign locally with RC with with like with with in RC one. So when you go talk to David, tell him this that I am that Samir is saying. It's I'm not speaking for Milan here, but what I'm proposing is if we decide to not encrypt the private key locally, then we should not let anybody sign with the local key either in RC1. So, so let that me means, add. Uh, uh, yeah, Ime, you can take a note. And uh, that means uh, maybe uh, some document work, we needed to mention this, right? Yeah, we need to make documented and we may have to even remove the current implementation as well. If we don't, because we don't want to release a security product with a mm -hmm. gap that we think people may use in production. Yeah. If we remove the encryption part, we should remove the signing part with local key as well. I think this looks good, but you may want to change it. If we remove the encryption of the signing key with local, if you remove the, if you remove encrypting the local signing key, then we should remove signing with the local signing key. Yep. That's my proposal. Please match. Yep, yep. Yep, if you want to discuss with it. Yeah, just a temporal comment and uh, we can discuss it further. Yep. Yeah, we, we, we can refresh it and also later uh, check this with uh, Shri as well. Uh, I agree with you. So for 914. Yep. Yeah, I think we discussed this already. This can move beyond RC1. I'm okay if you want to cut and paste okay. line to beyond RC1. Yeah, so we can also cut this line to below post the RC1. Amen. Okay, so let me cut and uh, move to post RC1, right? Yep. Yeah, maybe, yeah, you can insert somewhere, yeah. Okay. Ready. Yeah. Let's go back. Okay, so then we, we basically have the all the work items for RC1. Uh, so uh, the next thing is that uh, we, we want to understand the, the, the timeline, right? And uh, due to we have a limited uh, capacity. So uh, how about uh, later? Uh, I don't think we can do it now. How about later we can try to figure out uh, uh, the people uh, from different organization assigned to uh, each work items and we provide the high level uh, cost estimation. Uh, there is a column B here, but I'm not sure whether it is accurate now. So, so we, we assign people working on this uh, uh, work items, since these are the uh, high priority we, we need to do for RC1, then we provide a high level estimation. Then based on the estimation, we will have a, a roughly uh, uh, understanding on when RC1 can be released, then we discuss further whether the timeline, the release the, uh, date is uh, uh, meeting expectation from our customers or stakeholders. Then we can decide maybe some items are not that important. We can try to uh, adjust those work items. What do you think? I don't disagree with the approach, but I think everything else remaining here is needed. And the data is already here. The data you want, I think is already here. We can always go back and ask people, hey, do you have better data than this? But I think we have the data here for us to look at it now and, and come up with the date. Uh, yeah, we, we can try to calculate, but I'm not sure, uh, for example, for, for some items, because if only one person working on several items, so uh, that could uh, mean that uh, we can do uh, we can only do it in secretionally, right? So there okay. is a little time. That I I I agree with you, but there's one more, more one more approach you can do, right? So you can figure out which is the farthest item first, and then you can say at least the release is not before that farthest item completion. 
So among these dates, which is the date which is farthest out? Uh, let's uh, figure out firstly, uh, we, we check the column D, right? We can, uh, so column D means two week, two weeks if we start it, uh, three weeks. No, no, let's, in column F, what is the latest start date? In column F, what is the latest start date? Which date is the latest start date in column F? Column F uh, start date. Okay. I think some items have sure. been, yeah. I think some Which items one? have been, yeah, have been confirmed from the end of this month. I think this might be the. I think the scroll latest. down. I think the latest is the signature inspect. I looked at on my site. Scroll down. Yeah, signature inspect is the latest. If you look at line number 53. 53, okay. Or 52. Yeah, this one. So this is the latest. 952. Mm -hmm. Okay, so F52 is, is the latest date I see. So we know it's not before the end of the month. So it's probably, and then we have 4th of July here. I don't know if you guys, uh, okay. So I'm thinking it's not before 7-4. I don't see this item completing before in the next two weeks based on the existing data we have. Based on the existing data we have, it's no, it's not before 7-4, right? Uh, yeah, but, but we also needed to consider the, the column D effort. So yeah. maybe some, yeah. I agree. So, so we at least know it's not before 7-4, okay? We know that. Now let's look mm. at it again and see which one of the rows are unassigned, which don't have an owner. So let's look at line mm, number 49 okay. as an example. Line number 49, we said bug fix, code cleanup, quality, line number 49, right? We don't have an assigned owner to it. Have you guys, like, from what I see, people are fixing the bugs as they are going. But after all the code is checked in, there'll be some work required here. We don't have an assigned owner here. If we don't have an mm. assigned owner, that means this will start after all the work is complete, right? All the other work is complete. Yeah. This to me is a challenge, but this can be parallel, right? This work can be parallel. Can you guys yes. go back yeah. to Shiva and check, hey, can this work happen in parallel? I can check with Milind if this can happen in parallel. Yes. Okay, let's look yes. at line number 50. Can we assign an owner to line number 50? Is this something uh, you guys can take ownership of it? License, notice and attribution. We don't have an owner for it. Can you guys take ownership of this item? Yeah, I, I, so um, this one, we, we will check with uh, Shui, right, Damon? Well, I think um, this, is more, this is more of a project management, a program management. Can you guys help with this? I, this is my first open source project, so I don't know. So I'm just I, I think I think for this item, yeah. uh, you are mentioning to add uh, the license headers to each of the code, each of the uh, you know, each of the segments of the code, right? I don't know what all is required. I'm saying this is my first project. I don't know what all is required. Mm -hmm. If David yeah. knows uh, about it, can you take ownership of this item and work with David on okay, this? Okay, at least, yeah, at least the Fabian and uh, I, we, we could check with David uh, on this part. So if we, this is purely the product management work, of course, yeah. Fabian and I can take it, no problem, okay. yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, let's look at any item. Let's start going up line one by one. So now hang on, hang on. Now, so as you have taken up these items, right? Can you give a possible start date on these items? So, so that when we finish it, so can you give a possible start date on line number 50 and line number 51? 50 and uh, 51, right. Uh, how about uh, uh, we update it after check this with David? And okay. we will inform you from 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 the Slack. Right? We we That's have that fine. channel. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's let's go up then. Line number forty six. So line number forty six is also either. So we need to ask Shive, and I will ask Milan who is more good at this. I think from what we have seen is Shive's team is looking at integration tests quite well already. 
So we need to decide who, which team can take ownership of this item, or do we need to divide and conquer on this? Mm. We, we can check this with uh, with uh, Shui, and from your side, you can check with uh, Milind. Yep. And we also needed to maybe needed to clarify uh, this integrity test scope later. Well, yeah, uh, I think, hang on, we have defined the scope on the right hand side. Did you look at the rightmost column on this one? I think column G H I K. We have put some comments in there. The description. Uh, yeah, include end to end integration tests and CLI automated tests flow. So we give an example. So this is obvious stuff, right? When you release code, you need to have some end to end testing. Mm. So this was our, this is our normal flow, right? You build an image, you push an image, you sign the image, and then you verify your signature. This is the most common simple workflow. At least we need one end to end test case. Mm. We can mm. have more, but at least one, like the other test case that I can think about is multiple signatures, right? I can, we can keep thinking about test cases. I think it's, uh, we know what we at least want. this one at least yeah. this one as a basic right yes at least uh, this basic. I, I, yeah yeah i agree with you but i also remember shiway mentioned uh, the cli automated test because maybe the cli command line it is not uh, finalized yet yeah i agree so that's why it could have a dependency that we can't start on it but the work is required mm. for rc1 mm. yeah yeah for this i i agree with you yeah okay let's go Th up this there. item yeah yeah we can check this with Shui, and uh, later we can come back uh, who will be the best team or the owner for this yeah. item. And I also agree. this item has a dependency on the CLI command I line agree. spec. Yeah. I agree. Hey, Feynman, can you move up and show me column number? Yeah, yeah, okay, good, 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 good. Okay, let's keep going up. Yeah, we, we scroll up, uh, Feynman. Okay, so line number 45 is pretty obvious that one. Okay, line number 40, um, this is already assigned to Milan. It is waiting on the spec to complete. And that is the first line item he had. So Milan is still working on and this work has not started. Yeah, so you think uh, the verification extensibility should be included in uh, RC1 or without? No, no, I, I think it has to be in RC1. I, I completely believe it has to be an RC1 because we have talked about plugin extensibility for signing. We should definitely talk about verification extensibility. So uh, spec is TVD need to confirm priority. So that's what you guys are asking from me. That's the question. Yeah, that's a question. I can check with Milan, but I completely believe this is a requirement for, so I will get back an answer on this one by Thursday. But I believe line number 41 and 42 is needed because mm -hmm. okay. just like we say, we want to give others, for example, we just said, right? The example we just said that we will not support local signing, right? If you don't support local signing, then we need to let users build on their own. And hence, I think plug signing extensibility and verification extensibility both are needed. But let's, I'll talk to Milan to be sure. Okay. okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is, this might be a small risk since we still uh, we haven't had had this back yet. I agree with you. Okay, let's move on. Yeah, all of these items are complete. Anything marked in green is complete, right? So okay, let's give it. That way. Yeah, I give. I give a comments last week. Yeah, as for uh, number 27 to number 29, I think for these items, we still need to create issues to track them since this is, this is only and for, as for number 27, this is a new item that uh, we think, I think we need to uh, consider more effort for this part. Okay. And I think this is what Rakesh was asking. Rakesh was saying, how quickly can you give him an API so he can write some end-to-end -end testing? 
Today on the call, Rakesh was asking Shiva, saying, hey, Shiva, can you do these items sooner? That is one of the items. In the entry and test? No, Rakesh no. said he's going to get blocked. And hence, mm -hmm. he was asking Shiva when mm -hmm. he will have registry authentication figured out for pushing signatures and pulling signatures. So this is the stuff that you were talking about in the call half an hour ago. Mm. Ah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, the 927 related, right? Yes, both push and pull, right? 27 is push signature, 28 push is pull signature, 29 is filter the signature. Mm. So yeah, the sooner we start work on these, the better, right? So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, so for these three items, the start date expected uh, as soon as possible, right? Uh, yes, and uh, I think we, we can communicate this with uh, Shivi later. And uh, uh, Shivi also mentioned this uh, review process. So uh, at least the one uh, of Shivi uh, or Miot can approve this uh, PR, uh, I think uh, that, that is a fine, that can speed up the review process. Yep. Okay, what else? Mm -hmm. I think we can on? go ahead and uh, move to the next. So as for number 23, Yep. Ah, I think this is a implementation work since we have already confirmed, we have already uh, confirmed the directory structure specification. So I think we need to uh, create the issue and uh, track the work. And uh, yeah, I think we still have, we have engineers to start working for this item. Okay, good. Maybe, yeah, I think it can be started this week. Yeah. Nice. So we add a date for today. <laughs> Good. Yeah, this is start date. Yeah. Uh, for us. Uh, Number 21. Second can be yeah. started when the spec of the sign has been confirmed. The sign spec. Yeah. So I think the science spec is yeah. still uh, under construction since uh, I see Steve has a PR to include it, but he didn't uh, add the detailed uh, design, the, the prototype for sign command. I think we can go to the related PR. So this, this means it requires the sign spec has been confirmed, then we can start it. I agree. I agree. But is this something internally? Uh, yeah, I agree with you. I agree. Okay. But we should consider this has this has been a little bit uh, delayed since I remember Steve is out of office this week. Yeah, that's fine because people can still make progress. I think we can still make progress before the finalized nice sign because what what we have today works. We just need to make it better. Yes, agree. And uh, yeah, this, this should be some refactoring work. And uh, uh, as for the registry authentication, it has a dependency on row number 13. Yeah, this PR. Yep, I agree with you. And we talked about this with Shiva about half an hour ago, and Shiva said yes. So yeah. this is where we need help from Shiva on registry work so that he can unblock Rakesh. Yes, it has been confirmed in today's meeting. Yep. Let's go. Let's move on. Uh, this has been completed. Yeah, I think all of those items that have been assigned to Shiva's team uh, that have been clarif clarified in this meeting so E and uh, Samia, do you have any additional comments for this spreadsheet? Uh, Fimi, can you can you scroll down? I want to understand uh, since there are 
several items uh, blocking uh, the sure. uh, we, we mentioned the push pull uh, signatures and also this uh, registration spec it just uh, yeah this is three uh, 27 28 29 right so these three items we needed to uh, communicate with Shirui to to try to make uh, uh, the team start as early as possible, right? This and, and line, uh, this and line number thirteen, because line number thirteen is the authentication. Unless you authenticate, you can't do a push pull or filter, right? So you see how they are related. So twenty seven, thirty three. No, twenty seven, twenty eight, and twenty nine are related to row number one three thirteen. Can you go to row number one three now? One three thirteen. Yeah. So unless you're able to register and authenticate with the registry, you implement that and complete that implementation, you can't push pull and filter signatures, right? Mm. So this one line 13 and the below. 27, 28, 29, they are they are they have dependencies. Yes, they are related, yes. And 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 we are blocked or like or Rakesh is blocked on them. Okay. Actually, Rakesh is working on line 15, right? This uh, this task is uh, blocked due to the four four items we just mentioned. Right. Rakesh is working uh, on 15 and he also said he's working on no, no, he's working on uh, signing and verification. Scroll up. Yeah, he's working on line number 19. Okay, 15, I, 19. Uh, first of all, can you shrink your screen because we don't have enough rows to see at a time, Feynman? Mm -hmm. So if you can shrink your screen so we can see more rows and Scrolling becomes yeah. easier. So you can oh, just you mean zoom out. Zoom, yes, zoom out, please. Sure. Uh, let me check. Yeah, you can see that. Uh, yeah, you, you I'm can doing... click the one hundred percent on on the on the menu. You can move top, laptop. You you see the one hundred percentage. You can click uh, this one too. Yeah, zoom out. Then you can scroll up to show from nine fifteen till yeah, stop. Is this better? Yeah, this is better. So you can see that Rakesh is working on line number nineteen. And he's 19. also been working on verification as well. Nineteen fifteen, right? Verification, you mean? No, no. Uh, he's working on multiple item? items. He's working on multiple items, as you can imagine. But dependency with registry authentication is coming in now. And so he needs to be unblocked and line, I think 19 is what's blocking. So he's working on 19 right now, row number mm -hmm. 19. And that's why he needs Shiva's help on registry authentication. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 19 blocked by 17. Yes, that's what Rakesh said. But like okay. I explained, 17 is blocking 27, 28 and 29. Okay, 17 also blocking 27, 28, 29. Yes, because unless you have authentication figured out, how will you push, pull, and filter signatures, right? Okay, so so work item uh, 9, 17 should be finished as soon as possible. Yeah. So let's and highlight it in a light red. Yeah, and also 17 mentioned the start date. 
depending on row 13. So 13 should be finished. Yeah, this is the working in progress by Shirui's team. Okay. Okay, so after 13 work item completed, then it will unblock uh, line 17. And the service team is also on this line 17. Then service team needed to complete these uh, items. And so as possible, then this will unblock Rakish and also other 27, yeah. 28, 29. Okay, yeah. now it's, uh, it's clear. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Dan. I think we are done. Yeah, I think we, we have uh, aligned with the scope for RC1. And based on the last uh, start date, uh, we cannot release it before uh, middle of July. We, we could say that. Uh, and uh, we will come back. Uh, uh, we, we will communicate with this with uh, Shui's team and also David to align with them again. And uh, please, uh, uh, Samuel, let us know if you have other comments from, from your team. Yes, well. I will. Yes, I will. OK. OK. Sounds good. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And uh, Samir, yeah. Yep. Yeah, bye. Sure. Bye. bye. bye.